On day one, I spawn into the Dragon Block C mod as a full Saiyan. I look around and see the beautiful world around me. I spot Corrin's tower and Kami's lookout. Since I can't fly, I have to climb all the way up to the tower to go ahead and talk to Corrin. When I walk to Corrin, he offers me a flying Nimbus and a Sensu Bean. He also can teach me some skills, but I don't have enough training under my belt just yet to acquire any of them. I then use my Nimbus and take off to explore the world. I still have to do the regular Minecraft stuff and get some wood to go ahead and make a crafting table and all that jazz. On day two, I went mining and luckily found some diamonds. I then came back, crafting the map and then went exploring again on my nimbus and found my first ever battle against some of the red ribbon army these guys had rpgs and i was just going in with my melee attack and soon enough i wiped the soldiers out thankfully i had a sensu bean so that helped out a lot night comes and i start shadow training to start unlocking more of my power level i want to increase as fast as i can so i can get super saiyan very quickly on day three i start running some errands mining coal and also started shearing some sheep i then go hunting for some food because you know saiyans have big appetites and then i stumbled upon some huge red ribbon robot I started using my melee attacks to take them on and I realized during this mod that diamond swords aren't any better than my fists. They were shooting missile things at me, something like that, and I finally take out the last one and they both took out more than half of my health. So that showed me I was still very weak and needed to get stronger. I then go back home on my Nimbus and with the sheep I sheared, I crafted a bed. On day four, I went on a rampage. I saw a bear with a sword and finished him off quickly with my fist. I then take out a big red ribbon soldier. I go do some more errands for the rest of the day and head back home on my Nimbus. On day five, I saw off by killing some mobs that are getting burned by the fire and then i get on my nimbus and start exploring the sea i spot another red ribbon robot on my way and finish him quickly so i can continue my search for master roshi's house i find more of the bear ninjas on my search and power up quickly to take them out i then gain enough tp to learn a key blast move i choose the laser one since it sounds cool i test my laser ability on the tiger and then finish him off with my fist i then get back on my nimbus to try and find master roshi's house and then i stumble upon cell's arena i tried talking to him but let's just say if i ignored him anymore he would end my existence i get back on my nimbus and found goku and gohan i tried talking to them and they both offered to teach me some skills but i don't have enough training or tp yet to unlock these skills on day six after exploring the ocean as my main goal i finally found master roshi's house and i was super excited i finally did i then talked to master roshi and he offered me a turtle shell the same one he gave goku and krillin when they were kids so they could increase their power during training i then go to a nearby island to continue the story and i had to fight yamcha i just went in with only melee attacks and didn't even charge up and finish him off fairly quickly i then have to fight pilaf's gang including my I, Shu, and Pilaf. I destroyed each of them in only two hits since they were really weak. I then have to destroy Pilaf gang's robots that looked like huge Among Us characters for some reason. These robots were actually tough and I had to back off to eat some food and gain some health just to attack again. We end up fighting in the water and I finally take the green one out and then slowly finish off one of the pinks. I finally take out the last one and that was it for the Among Us characters. Or so I thought. Night came and I have to fight those three Among Us characters combined and they were huge. I take them out again with only melee attacks and it was honestly way easier than before. On day 7 I have to fight Bacterian from the original tournament saga in Dragon Ball. I took him out with ease. I then have to fight Yamcha again but he is stronger this time. I go in with only melee attacks like before but this time he took out more than 90% of my health and if I did not have my Sensu Bean I would be no more. Once I eat my Sensu Bean I attack Yamcha again with my fists and I finally end him with half my health gone. I then fight my next opponent Jackie Chun aka Master Roshi and oh boy was he strong. One hit and 82% of my health gone just like that and he could have almost one shotted me. I then have to back up to eat some food to gain my health back and then he disappears which was a good thing because I could not finish him since he was way too strong. I knew I couldn't challenge him at my current power level so I headed over to Kami's lookout on my Nimbus to check it out. I first talked to Kami to see what he could offer me then I went to East and then lastly I went to see what Piccolo would say. They all pretty much told me the same thing so I just went towards the hyperbolic time chamber and I see Vegeta and Trunks there. I then see the entrance of the hyperbolic time chamber and enter to start training for a little bit. I tried moving but the gravity was too strong in here and I could barely move. I then started training with the shadow dummy for a little bit and just kept punching him. I do realize I am going to go low on food since I am already so I decided to go hunting for a little then came back to train for the rest of the day in the hyperbolic time chamber. Day 8 started and I'm already using my key blast laser on this giant. He was shooting missiles at me and I charged him with my fist. He was quite hard actually and left me at 20% health which isn't good. I then tried rematching Jackie Chun again. I went in with my fist and he was still too strong. My health was ticking on 0% and I actually got defeated for the first time ever. I thought this was the end for me, but when I pressed respawn, I ended up in the other world where King Yemma was. There's all the yellow clouds underneath me where hell is and all that good stuff. King Yemma allowed me to go back to Earth in 5 minutes, which was a really good thing. On day 9, I went food hunting again so I can have enough during training. I then go inside the hyperbolic time chamber again and start training with my shadow dummy. I made sure I was fully charged up since the gravity tool was a lot and I have to do enough damage on this dummy to take him out. I then tried fighting a more powerful version of 
of Jackie Chun and went in with the key blast. I then charged him and I got beaten even harder than last time. I got sent to the other world and I wanted to check out hell. So I started throwing hands with all the devils down there and got whooped so hard. I just decided to go back to earth. On day 10, I fight Jackie Chun again and I finally defeated him. I continue the story and have to fight Colonial Silver from the Red Ribbon Army. I then run up just punching and punching and he finally gets taken out and he only took out 60% of my health which isn't too bad. I then have to battle this big guy again and I take his head off with my fist. I go in with more and finish him off. I then have to fight Murasaki and let me tell you this guy was weak. I was toying around with him beating him up with steak in my hand and all that jazz. We then go on to fighting Android 8 and I just full charge spam hit him with my fist and I take him out without needing to back up but just barely. We then go on to someone named Buyan and we do struggle a bit with this person but backing up and eating does regen my health fast enough for me to go back in with a melee attack to finish him off. I then have to fight someone named General White. I do try playing this fight different and keeping my distance using my laser key blast ability while going in with some punches that seem to do the trick to finish him off. I then have to fight someone named General Blue and oh my god this guy was a different beast compared to the last guy. I tried key blast and nothing bro. My last resort was running in with a barrage of punches to finish him off quickly before my health goes to zero and it was not enough. I got destroyed. Once I came back from King Yemma's I did train a bit myself and barely destroyed General Blue. Once I did I made a katana and headed for the next mission which was defeating Tao. I was charging him with my katana and he took out a lot of my health in one hit. I went to zero quickly and if I did not have my sensu bean I would be no more. I go in for my last final attack and I do finally end him. Afterwards I challenged the red ribbon army because I was on a roll and oh boy did I underestimate the power of quantity. I was getting hit from left and right and got finished so quickly and sent to King Yemma's in literally 2.3 seconds. On day 11 I tried challenging the red ribbon army again thinking the last time was a major fluke. I charged him all like last time with my katana and got taken out quicker than last time. Skipping to day 14 since the last three days were intense training in the hyperbolic time chamber and I finally defeated the army from day 11. Guess what else I got? I finally unlocked Super Saiyan along with the Kamehameha wave. As you guys can see, bam, just like that golden hair and my battle power doubled just like that, which is going to help out a ton. On day 15, I get ready to battle with armor and a katana and start charging up to fight in my Super Saiyan form for the first time ever. I have to fight someone named Spike the Devil. I hit him twice with my katana but got obliterated in one second and I was getting really sick of it. Day 15 to 20 was grind mode. I went mining for some coal. I went on a mop spree and all that Minecraft stuff you could think of. Day 20 to 25 was more of the regular regular Minecraft stuff with some mobs, mining, Dragon Ball training here and there and whatnot. Day 26, I happened to stumble upon a village with some ninja bears and I was going to take the food first, but these guys are in my way, so I go ahead and take them out easily. I go back to Korin's tower and unlock the grade 2 of Super Saiyan. This form is like the one you have seen Trunks and Vegeta do, the bulked up Super Saiyan look that gives them strength, but on the downside slows them down when they're fighting. I fight Spike the Devil again and oh my god, I've grown way stronger as a Super Saiyan grade 2 and take him out with ease. Then, I have to fight someone I really don't, which is Goku's grandpa. Grandpa Gohan is already dead as you can see from his halo, but he was a tough opponent. I had to back up and eat some steak to get my health, but afterwards, a few melee attacks did the trick to finish him. I then have to fight Yamcha again for the third time, and oh boy, I whipped him so hard as a Super Saiyan grade 2, everything was super easy. On to Chao 2 next, and bro, this guy was almost a joke. I ended him in literally two hits, I felt so bad, I really did not want to fight Chao Tzu. We then went on to Krillin, and he lasted twice as long as Chao Tzu, which isn't very much. Then on to Tien, I thought this guy would be a piece of cake like the rest, but bro, he destroyed me in two seconds. I totally forgot he was strong back in the old era. On day 27, I try rematching Tien again and get obliterated even faster than before. Because of this, I head back to the hyperbolic time chamber to start my training again, but in Super Saiyan this time. I go against my shadow dummies like always, but by the end of the night, I have gained enough training to go even further beyond to Super Saiyan Grade 3. This was just more of a bulked version from the regular Super Saiyan Grade 2, which was kind of a downer. I then go on to fight King Piccolo, and oh boy, was he tough. Once I hit King Piccolo, I had to back up each stake and regenerate my health before I could even try to hit him again. I had to repeat the same process because of how much damage he was inflicting on me in one hit. I did lose patience and said once I'm done eating, I'll charge him with a barrage of fists and I took him out, but I also got taken out at the same time. I then come back and fight someone named Drum. He looks like a fat version of Piccolo, so I just charge him with my melee attack. He takes 50% of my health in one hit alone, which makes me back up and eat my food. I then use my Kamehameha wave along with charging in and I just barely take him out. I charge on my Kamehameha wave and charge and punching him and I just got two-shotted and sent back to the other world so fast. Once I'm back from the other world, I start training right away in the hyperbolic time chamber with the shadow dummies again for a while. I then go outside and try to talk to Whis and see a teleportation option and click it. And to my surprise, I get spawned where the tournament of power takes place, which is so cool. I went back to training and somehow became the legendary Super Saiyan just like you've seen with Broly. On day 28, I finally had enough to go and upgrade my Super Saiyan form and as I transform to Super Saiyan, I am not blonde anymore. I'm just green like Broly for some reason. I feel confident are challenging Piccolo again and I still got absolutely destroyed. 
destroyed even with this new power up. On day 29 and 30, I head to this desert type area to gather dinosaur meat since this regenerates our health way faster than regular cooked steak. While I beat up these dinosaurs in the desert, I stumble upon one of the Red Ribbon Army along with more ninja bears from before and these guys are a breeze to take out. On day 31, I'm back in the hyperbolic time chamber training even more because the main way to get stronger in Dragon Ball is just to train, train, train. After training, I decided to try and fight King Piccolo again, but this time I am a bit stronger and also have dinosaur meat which regenerates so much more of my health compared to the previous food I used. I charge Piccolo with my fist and as I do, I get left with 1% health and got super lucky. I then decide to eat more dinosaur meat and charge again and finally finish King Piccolo off. I then try to start my next fight, but then it tells me I have to meet up with Kami and I talk to him before I could continue any further. Once I go to Kami's lookout and talk to Kami, he says that he can train me now and since I done that, I can continue the story now and fight other people. I then come back down and have to fight Mercenary Tao. I hit him once, back up, then take some dinosaur meat before I charge him again. I hit him with a bunch of fists for a good 5 seconds and then back up finally to heal again. I charge with my last attack and finally finish him off. I then go on to fight Tian Shenhan again and try to use the same tactics I've been using which is punching him as much as I can before I have to back up and eat some dinosaur meat. I got kinda lazy and just wanted to keep punching him and my ego took over really bad and he did more damage than I thought. Just like that I got sent back to the other world yet again. On day 32 to 34, I go back to the desert to go and get some more dinosaur meat and fight some mobs. At the end of the day, I come back to fight Tian Shenhan again. I charge this new key boss move to the max amount I could. This move is like what Vegeta used against Boo and damages me and also I get taken out by my own move. On day 35 to 37, I go exploring around the map fighting more of the Red Ribbon Army and then I stumble upon some of the Bear Ninjas. I then make my way back to the Hyperbolic Time Chamber to train even more because of how fast Tian destroyed me and that really irritated me. Training with the weighted vest and my shadow dummy is the best way to train. I then try rematching Tien again, but this time I did the same mistake using that key move that drains my health also. This move was so strong, I finally took out Tien, but I also took out myself in using it. On day 38, once I'm back from the other world, I start making a house right under Kami's lookout, so if I need anything from anyone, I can talk to them very quickly. When night came, I decided to power up quickly so I could start my next battle. I then have to fight Piccolo, but the problem is, I still wasn't aware of the fact on why this move took out my health, and I thought it was a fluke, so I just kept continuing to use it, and I still take myself out yet again. On day 39, I'm furious from the day before and go hunting for some more food. I then go on and try to find a desert biome because I need some cactus for a certain something, and I finally find it, but it's surrounded by a bunch of mobs. I then return home and use the cactus I got along with some Warren Eye crystals, gold, and redstone to make a tier 1 tech chip. I then use iron, tech chips, and a Warren Eye crystal to craft the one and only dragon radar. On day 40, I use some lapis and glass to make a scouter just because it looked cool. I then make my way back to the hyperbolic time chamber and unlock the Broly form again with my Super Saiyan transformation. I train again with shadow dummies like I always do, but once I'm done with my training, I unlock my potential up 5%. I then use the rest of my TP to upgrade stuff for my attributes so I can grow even stronger to fight my next opponents. I then go back down and start charging up the Super Saiyan for my next opponent, and that next opponent will be Piccolo. With my new Broly mode and my attribute upgrades and training, I felt confident just charging Piccolo with tons of punches. I wasn't taking as much damage as I thought it was, so it seems like my training really did pay off. I finally finished Piccolo with ease. I try another battle out, and then out of nowhere, a huge Piccolo spawns, and he is way stronger than the last one, and he made me back up to take a Sensu Bean. Once I took my Sensu Bean, I charged back at him, and it was game over. I then have to challenge six Sabermen. When I destroy them, they drop Sabermen seeds, which allows me to spawn them in. On day 41, I spawn one Sabermen in, and right after, start my fight against the one and only, the legendary saying ratted. I tried backing up to heal but got annoyed and tried sucker punching him but he hit me and that was the end of me. On day 42 I came back from the other world to find my loot and lost everything. I've searched the whole area around me and it all got despawned. On day 43 I'm hunting getting me and trying to acquire all that stuff I lost again. On day 44 I start off at a village taking their food then go on to a desert biome where there's dinosaurs so I can get their meat. I then go mining for some resources since I lost most of it when I died and my main goal was to find some diamonds. I want a diamond so I can make a diamond pickaxe and I can mine some obsidian to make a nether portal. Day 45 was all dedicated towards mining. On day 46 I acquired some diamonds to get a pickaxe and start mining some obsidian. Night comes and I head over to Korn's tower to get a sensu bean off him. On to day 47 I start prepping the back entrance of my house where the nether portal will be made. I save obsidian by not placing the corners of the nether portal since I only had 10 blocks. I then continue finishing the top of the house and then replace all the 
floors on the side of the house so it looks way nicer. I finally get my flint and steel and I'm ready to light up the nether portal. I then head over to the nether and mine some glowstone along with some nether stone. On day 47 to 52, I return home and craft a space pod. With the space pod, I can now travel to other planets and the planet we're gonna go to is Namek. Once on Namek, I spot dinosaurs and start getting all their meat. I then spot Namekians and then I start slaying them because that's exactly what Vegeta did when he first came to planet Namek. While I was slaying these Namekians, something started showing up on my screen telling me stop or I will turn very evil. I did not listen and kept swinging on the Namekians. I then return back to earth with my space pod and go up to Whis to talk to him. Whis then tells me I'm an angry fellow and to stop bothering him. I was very confused at this point and I went to Kami and then Piccolo and they were both saying the exact same thing saying I was evil. I then noticed my energy bar turned from blue to red and no one wanted to talk to me anymore. This was not a good thing. I then go down near my house to start a battle against Raditz. My first move is a Kamehameha wave. I then punch, back up, then punch again. I use a Sensu Bean and redo those tactics. I then get hurt a lot trying to back up to take another Sensu Bean and there it showed I could only use one within a certain time frame and that was the reason I was sent back to the other world. Once I came back from the other world, I got my space pod ready and headed towards planet Vegeta. Then onto the next day, I start looking for some Dragon Balls with my scouter. I then fly up towards Korin's tower to ask for a Sensu Bean and he told me I should leave and not come back and gave me a dark Nimbus cloud. I was not able to ride my regular flying Nimbus because I was now evil. I headed up towards Kami's lookout and Vegeta just told me to shut up and that was annoying. So I just went to the hyperbolic time chamber to start some more training like always with some shadow dummies. Afterwards, I get back into my space pod and head for planet Amic since their dinosaurs were way easier to get than the ones on Earth. Once I come back, I see a moon symbol and start powering up and to my surprise, I turn into a great ape. I powered up again and turned into a super saiyan great ape which was so cool to see. The next day, I have a katana made and ready to battle my next opponent which is Raditz again. I charged confidently without backing up once, trusting my sword and failed miserably. I was really angry and went straight to the hyperbolic time chamber and trained seriously and not waste any more time. Once I came out of the hyperbolic time chamber, I upgraded my transformation hoping it can aid me in my next battle. On day 53, I go back to planet Namek to get some more dinosaur meat and while I'm there, I see a stone ball on the floor and when I break it, I finally acquire my first ever Namekian Dragon Ball. On day 54, I tried challenging Raditz again and got obliterated by one key blast from him and had enough. On day 55, while looking for some Dragon Balls, I stumble upon a weird looking place and when I get to the bottom of it, I see Bobbity. I then walk towards Bobbity to talk to him and he tells me, I sense evil within you, my friend. Serve me and I will grant you power beyond your imagination. And since Vegeta subjected himself, it was only the right thing for me to do as well. When I subjected myself, I got a Majin tattoo on my forehead just like Vegeta did and when I checked my attributes, everything was up compared to before. So it honestly worked out in my favor becoming evil. On day 56, I'm so tired of getting beaten by Raditz all the time and finally decided to face him again and wanted this to be the last time. I charged up my deadliest move that hurts me because of how powerful it was and I was in my max Super Saiyan form with the Majin Curse. I get close to him to unleash it and I finally end him somehow with one move. I seriously underestimated this move. Once I finished him, he told me that two stronger Saiyans were coming to Earth, which we know are Nappa and Vegeta. It told me I needed to have 10 cooked dinosaur meat and to be in a biome called Dirty Stony before I fight the 12 Sabermen. On day 57, I had to Namek to start getting more dinosaur meat to start my battle with the Sabermen. It looks so funny seeing the 12 charge at me, but it was so hard to get close to them because if I use my fist to punch up close, they all got a chance to hit me which depletes my health really fast so i have to hit quickly and fly back i kept using this tactic and finally finished them off on to day 58 the biggest dragon ball fight in history nappa and vegeta vegeta tells nappa my power level is over 9000 and nappa charges me i upgraded my flying recently and this is gonna help out a lot we are just flying and punching each other so fast that i cannot almost keep up myself i'm using super saiyan with max key so flying is doubled he is very strong and makes me back up a few times to eat food but i come back every time doing the same thing just clashing it out doing this i finally take Nappa out, but that wasn't the end of my problem since Vegeta is still here. I hit Vegeta first and do the same tactics I used against Nappa and they seem to be working. My flying gave me enough leeway to back up and eat food before continuing the fight. I tried to finish him off with one last key blast, but that wasn't enough. I continue to use the same tactics and finally finish him. On day 59, I go to Planet Namek to find some Dragon Balls, get some wood, and get some dinosaur meat. I'm doing all of this in preparation for my next battle. I have to defeat 9 of Frieza's soldiers. I make sure I fully power up to my strongest Super Saiyan form before fighting Frieza's soldiers. I then start the battle and these guys had big numbers on me. When fighting close range, I have to maneuver left and right so I don't get hit by all of them at once because if that happens, I'm finished. I keep using the same strategy, using my fast flying speed along with my dinosaur meat for health regeneration and finally finish all of them off. My next battle is with a fellow named Q. Q states he's the strongest, but he really isn't different than some of the other people I fought. He is strong, don't get me wrong, but my flying speed and strong melee attacks did the job. I then fight Dodoria and do the same thing to her. The only difference is is I use 
a key blast this time and then charge for the finish. I then go and start cooking some dinosaur meat so I have enough for my next battle. I then have to fight Zarbon and this time I start to fight with the Kamehameha wave and then charge in with my fast flying melee attack. I try finishing Zarbon off with my last Kamehameha wave but that doesn't work. So I charge him with the barrage of punches to finish him. I then have to fight the one and only Ginyu Force. I use my Kamehameha wave and then charge them, but these guys hit hard and there were a lot of them. They were also using Key Blast off the start, which normally my enemies don't do. They were really strong, but I finished most of them off, but the last two gave me so much trouble and finally ended me. Day 60, I was pretty upset when I came back from the other world because I lost all my stuff and it was all on Planet Namek. I didn't even have a space pot to go there anymore since I lost it in battle. So I had to go and get all the materials to craft a space pot again. I head back to Planet Amic with a space pot to search for my lost loot for the rest of the day. I check everywhere and could not find it still. On day 60 to 63, I was so angry I went back to Earth in the hyperbolic time chamber for 3 days straight to unlock my new Super Saiyan form. The thing is, my transformations just kept getting bulkier and not actually ascending, which was very weird. On day 64, the same thing happens when I rematch the Ginyu Force. Only 2 left, but I get taken out by the last 2 again. Once I I arrive back on Earth from the other world, I make another space pod so I can go back to Planet Amic to look for my belongings, but I lost it yet again and return back to Earth. Once I'm there, I craft a Dragon Ball radar to go hunting for some more Dragon Balls. On day 65, I learn a new move from Cell, which looks super awesome and it's called the Supernova. I then finally find the last Dragon Ball I need to summon Shenron for the first time ever. He offered wishes like Kachin, which is the strongest metal in the universe, and Janemba Essence, which you can use to create things like powerful weapons I need. For my wish, I just picked the Kachin shard because why the heck not? Uh, day 66, I decided to build a house on Planet Namek since I'm forced to battle some people there and I can access furnaces, crafting tables, and all that jazz easier without going back to Earth and that can save me a lot of time. Day 67, I fight the Ginyu Force again and the same outcome. On day 68, once I got my Majin Curse, I go back to Planet Namek and finally defeat the Ginyu Squad. I then challenge the one and only, the most scariest opponent, the most anticipated Frieza. He was standing there not moving at all. So I fully charged a Kamehameha wave and unleashed it on him. When I unleashed this Kamehameha wave, he changed into his second form and then finally into his final form. Once I hit him, it was game time now. I tried to punch him, but when he hit me back, he did 84% damage in one punch, which is insane. He then shot his laser and I accidentally ran into it and got one-shotted by it. His strength was no joke and I underestimated him badly. Day 74, six days later after finding Frieza and six days training in the hyperbolic time chamber, I have finally trained enough to ascend beyond which I was previously, which was Super Form level 6 to level 7. I finally figured out how to transform the Super Saiyan 2 and 3 without going into the bulky transformations, and now I acquired the beautiful hair from the Super Saiyan 3 transformation. But oh my god, does this Super Saiyan 3 drain so much energy. I then go back to Bobby to regain my curse mark to gain even more power, so I'm more prepared for Frieza. I then get in my space pod and travel right back to Planet Namek. Once on Namek, I go straight into Super Saiyan 3 to fight Frieza. I spot Frieza underwater in her final form and I charge her. Before, Frieza was able to take out 84% of my health in one hit and now he can only take out 43%, which is a major improvement in this new form. I use the same tactics as I I did with the Genu Force using my speed to my advantage. I charged with a lot of punches and I got ended by Frieza. Day 75, I'm trying to find Warnock Crystals to make a space pot again since mine is lost at Namek. Day 76, once I'm back on Namek, I finally have all 7 Dragon Balls and summon the Namekian Dragon. For my first wish, I get one small club and for my 2 other wishes, I get 2 catching shards. Afterwards, I'm back fighting Frieza again but this time I'm stronger, smarter, faster, my defense is better, I'm overall just better and ready this time, and I use the supernova on him. I fully charge with my fist till I can't take no more, I back up, regenerate, and then go back for more. I use another supernova and try to finish him with a bunch of melee attacks, and finally with enough pressure took him down. Once defeating Frieza, I knew I wasn't strong enough since the fights were always so close. Since I wasn't strong enough, I decided to train for 7 days straight in the hyperbolic time chamber. On day 83, I used all my training points to upgrade my attributes to be stronger for my next fight. I then start transforming to Super Saiyan 3 to get ready for my next battle. I start my battle against these Frieza soldiers and these guys are barely doing any damage. Me using my training points for attribute upgrades instead of Saiyan transformations was a huge improvement. I easily finish all the soldiers off. I then power up to Super Saiyan 3 again and have to fight King Cold. King Cold was huge compared to everyone I fought before and he was standing still till I punched him. He didn't do as much damage as I thought he would do but that's thanks to my 7 days of training in the hyperbolic time chamber. I then realized Cyborg Frieza was right next to King Cold and I had to battle them both at the same time. During this fight I felt like 
future trunks easily destroying them because the damage I took was minuscule compared to before my training. My main issue was regenerating my energy because Super Saiyan 3 drained so much energy in just a couple seconds. I used my dinosaur move to solve that issue and took out King Cold easily. I then charge Frieza and take him out the same way. Then, the start of the Android Saga starts and it tells me to ascend to a Super Saiyan before continuing. Once I went Super Saiyan, it told me to go talk to Kami. Kami basically tells me there is something way more terrifying than Frieza coming and I should look out. It then tells me to go to a biome called Dirty Stony and that's what I do. I then spot both androids and try punching him and get obliterated so bad and it got sent to the other world. I just wanted to stop wasting time so I spent two days again straight in the time chamber. I go back to Bobby quickly to get my curse mark and battle the androids again. This time fighting the androids they barely do damage because of the two days in the hyperbolic time chamber and me being in Super Saiyan 3. The first time I fought them I was only in Super Saiyan so this gives me a big advantage. I then charge and take out Dr. Jiro. I keep the same pressure on the last android and finally finish him off just like Jiro. Afterwards I go to Planet Amic to meat farm so I can have enough for my next upcoming battle. On day 86 I power up to Super Saiyan 3 to battle Android 18. I just go back and forth clashing with her and keeping the pressure on. My main problem is maintaining Super Saiyan 3. I have to back up every couple seconds just to regenerate my energy or I will go back into base form and lose everything. I finally take out Android 18 with just my fist. I accidentally went on to my next battle in base form without even taking a break and got absolutely destroyed. This time I fight Cell, I'm fully powered up. Cell does around the same damage as Android 18, but he has some sort of instant transmission and just hits me from thin air, which is a huge problem. I just keep at it using my flying punch attacks to get as many hits in before backing up. I keep putting pressure on Cell and eventually get him, but he was way tougher than Android 18. Night comes and I have to fight Android 17 and 16. I tried using a supernova, but my energy energy drains too fast and if I went in with it I would lose all my power. This Super Saiyan 3 form gives me no time to mess around. I only have a couple of seconds to fight before eating dinosaur meat. I used the same techniques when fighting Android 18 but was more cautious since I'm fighting two androids this time. Android 17 shoots a huge key blast at me and I keep the same technique going for a long time and finally take out 16. I then keep the pressure on 17 and finally take him out also. This cell is a bit stronger than the last one but the main problem with this cell is his transportation technique. When fighting he can just spawn right up to my face no matter how far I go. Cell tried throwing a key blast at me but I dodged. I perfect my exact technique with perfect timing because if I slip up once then I'm dead by Cell. I have to strategically do everything and did so for a long time and finally take Cell out. I have to fight 7 Cell juniors afterwards and I swear these guys were so annoying. They didn't even do damage damage but there were 7 of them and all of them had that same Cell teleportation technique and they all do at the same time and if their damage was slightly higher I would be done for but thankfully my body can take their hits. I was fighting for a long time and while the sun came up I finally took out the last of the Cell Juniors. Day 88 I tried fighting Perfect Cell right after and get absolutely destroyed and sent to the other world. Day 91 I came out of the hyperbolic time chamber after training for three days and started my fight with Cell again and oh god this guy was teleporting like no one's business and shooting key blasts at me and anything you can name. I ran through so much dinosaur meat fighting him and fought for so long but it would take too long to show but I just kept using the same strategy of hit and run basically and finally took him out. I try to fight my next opponent and it says I have to talk to Bobby because he's trying to revive Majin Buu I guess. I then have to fight someone named Pew Pew and he barely damages me. I take him out very quickly this guy was basically a joke. The rest of the day I stocked up on more food and then the next day I have to fight someone named Yakon. This guy was very weak just like the last and very very easy to take out. Then I of nowhere the demon king Dabora. He was stronger and faster than the last two but nothing I couldn't easily handle. I finally finished him off with a punch. I then have to fight the one and only Fat Majin Buu. This guy was stronger than the others and could finish me off in three punches so I had to be very careful. He also had the same teleportation Cell had and using key blasts during our battle. I just ran at him with a barrage of punches and kept doing so and finally ended him in one hit. I then have to fight Majin Buu again and we all know the outcome of this fight and then start my fight with Super Majin Buu. He's stronger than last time so I use my Kamehameha wave on him and afterwards he uses his key blast against me but I dodge it and charge him with my fist. I keep this pace and pressure going with hitting and backing up and finally end him. On day 95 I didn't even bother fighting my next opponent because I usually get destroyed right after I win so I went straight to the hyperbolic time chamber again for three days to upgrade my strength and all that stuff. My next opponent is Super Majin Buu Gotenks absorbed and that's a handful. He is so strong even after my three days of training which is unusual. Usually I overpower them after 
after my training session. I then use my max flying dash and start flying around him and hitting him since he was fast and could teleport on me. Somehow one of his punches took me out of my Super Saiyan form to complete base leaving me helpless and he ended me. I rematched Boo and finally ended him. I then fight a weaker version of Boo because the Go Tanks fusion ran out. I beat the stronger one so we all know I went against this Boo. I then have to fight Majin Boo, Mystic, Gohan, Absorbed and this fight went on for a long time. He kept teleporting on me and all I could do was deliver heavy blows when he did. He even shot a key blast at me but I kept persisting on Boo and finally finished him off. I thought it was a smart idea fighting Kid Boo right away and holy smokes was I wrong. When I went to the other world I wanted to see King Kai so I crossed Snake Way and it actually took a long time to go there. When I arrived on King Kai's planet and tried talking to him he said he would not teach me Kaioken because I am an evil spirit. There was some dude right behind King Kai his name was Jin and he had some kind of ultra instinct omen on him. I don't know who that is I've never seen him in the show or anything. He said I had so much evil but he sensed great potential in me. When I rematched Kid Buu I was fighting him for so long like really long but I eventually took him out. Then I fight the one and only God of Destruction Beerus. He was so fast I couldn't do anything. I kept trying to use Dino Meat to heal but he was too fast and outdid my Dino Meat and ended me. Day 100 I came out of the hyperbolic time chamber training for 5 days after versing Beerus because he was way too strong for me. I rematch Beerus again but it's still really hard because my Super Saiyan 3 drained so much energy but I finally showed him enough and he left. The next thing it says is to ascend to a Super Saiyan God and oh boy I cannot wait for this. In order to unlock the God form I need to become good so I decided to stop my evil ways and become pure again. I then talk to Whis and finally unlock the God form. I then go and stand next to Goku since he's the Saiyan so I can transform into a Super Saiyan God for the first time ever and holy crap do I look sick. I then challenge Beerus with this new Super Saiyan God form and wow I am amazed. This form does not drain energy like the Super Saiyan 3 form yet is way stronger and is perfect. I then charge up a half powered supernova and unleash it on Beerus. It destroys the ground beneath us but he is unfazed and quickly destroys me afterward. I then rematch Beerus again and I do finally get him and he goes with Whis back to his planet. I then try my next opponent and it's Whis. Just know guys I tried my hardest but bro Whis is another level like I couldn't do any like that's it like there's no way i could get anything else in this other 100 days with me so i went in the time chamber and finally unlocked ultra ego as you guys can see i have the ultra ego clothes and all that on so i literally look so cool now so yeah, i can't put the ultra ego into use because it's already 100 days hopefully you guys enjoyed the video it's been a more yali peace out